Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you've been having difficulty planing highly figured wood, you may just need to change and go at it with a high angle approach. Now that doesn't necessarily mean a new plane. I'm going to show you how to make a blade a high angle. Stay with me. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. So the more you get into hand planes and hand tool woodworking, you're going to start to uh, really appreciate the surface that you can get off a piece of wood right from the hand plane. And then that's gonna lead you to working with more and more highly figured woods. Well, I'm of the belief, based on my own experience, that your best result, in fact, about 80% of those figured woods can best be handled with a truly sharpened blade, and I mean really sharp, with a very minimal projection. And then you could say that by closing the throat down, and by that I mean you move the whole frog apparatus forward so that the gap where the shaving comes out is just literally the thickness of the shaving. That'll take care of perhaps another 10% that you couldn't deal with just using a sharp blade and a minimal projection. But then that leaves you with the final 10%. How are you gonna deal with those stubborn woods that just won't cut cleanly without tearing? That's where you're gonna induce what we call a high angle approach. Now that normally has meant either going out and buying a special high angle frog for your existing plane or buying a high angle plane that is actually made to pitch the blade higher than 45 degrees. So what I'm going to show you is how you can take your regular bench plane and by modifying the blade you can actually turn that into a high angle approach. Not rocket science by any stretch, it takes a little bit of work, but the nice thing is the preparation is a one-time procedure. From then on it's just sharpening like you would sharpen a normal blade, but the results can be stunning. Okay, before we actually go to work on this blade, let's talk a little more about how this whole thing works. So here's your standard bench plane. This is referred to as a bevel down. So when you have your blade and chip breaker assembled and you put this in place, the bevel is on the bottom side of the blade. The frog, this piece right here, on a typical bench plane is going, and I have my protractor here set at 45 degrees, so if you put that on there, it should line up. The blade is held at 45 degrees, and that is what we refer to as the angle of attack. That's the angle that the blade is actually cutting the wood. Now, I use a, what's called a Charlesworth ruler trick, which involves a very small bevel on, the, on this side of the blade, but it's less than a degree, so I don't even factor that in. I still say whether you're using this bevel or not, you're still planing somewhere around 45 degrees. On some planes, you can actually buy a separate frog that'll bring the blade up an extra five degrees, even an extra 10 degrees. There were some of these antique planes were specifically designed for dealing with figured wood and their frog simply pitches the blade at a higher angle. But as I said, you don't have to go out and do that. So what we're going to do, and here's what it looks like finished. Here's a regular blade. We've gone in and we have cut and polished a 20 degree back bevel on this blade. So put your chip breaker on the same way you would. Now when you put that in and it's sitting in your plane at 45 degrees, that's 45 degrees, but then the wood fibers are hitting that bevel that you've added on there, that high angle bevel, which adds an additional 20 degrees. So now instead of planing with an effective angle of 45, you're planing at 65. A lot harder to push, but the results can be stunning on highly figured wood. Now, you don't need that all the time, and that's why we don't leave it at a high angle in that high angle approach because it's too hard to push. And unnecessary, you don't want it. When you need it, well, then you have to deal with the extra push, but the results are well, well worth it. Now, to get the angle correct on the tool rest, I have a, what's called a 17 degree chisel, which we use for dealing with really soft woods. And I set that on there, and I raise the chisel, I raise the the tool rest up a little bit more. So 17 and 20 aren't that far apart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it, and I'll check it occasionally once I start to get a little bit wide and I can measure it, I'll check it with my protractor. Take a very light approach to this. 
especially if you're using a traditional wheel, which have a tendency to burn. I'm using a CBN wheel, which cuts a lot cooler and faster. Now I want that to be about double that width, maybe even a little bit more. Now once you get enough of a bevel on there that you can read it, and that looks to be right on 20 degrees. When you're grinding, you want to make sure that you're, try, you're keeping this bevel the same width. It's going to make it a lot easier because now you've got to go in and polish it on stones that cut much slower. So from the bench grinder, try to keep that as even as possible. If you've got to go back and alter it, modify it a bit, do that rather than trying to do it on your stones. Light touch is the key. Now the next step is to eliminate those heavy grinding scratches. I find it best to do this using one of these little uh, grinding jig or honing jigs and uh, some magnifiers so you can see a little bit better. And I'm just gonna, just tight enough to hold that in place. I'm gonna use a straight edge from the wheel that this will rest right on out here and touch the bevel. And what you want is to make, set it so that it has positive contact along the entire bevel, and I think I need to extend this out a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. So at this point, I'll snug that up, and I'm gonna to go to work on my coarse stone. I'd suggest starting somewhere around 1,000. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to do just a little bit of work and I'm going to come back and look and if I'm polishing at the toe or at the heel, I'll adjust accordingly and I'll show you how. When you're doing this, make sure you distribute the pressure along the cutting edge as evenly as possible. So I've got four fingers all pressing the same amount and I move side to side so as not to wear the stone unevenly. I can really only use the forward two thirds. So after you've gone in and used that for about a minute, just flip it around so that you even out the wear before you go back in to reflatten that stone. Now a quick look shows that I'm touching out at the toe but not at the heel, which means I probably should bring this out just a little bit farther and it'll save me from having to remove a whole lot of steel at the front and I want to be able to Move, I want to be able to touch the back side at the same time I'm touching the front. So that's better. I'm actually going from front to back. I just need to catch up out here in the corners, which I may have taken them just a little bit too low in the grinding process. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. You can see that this is all one color. This is coming off of the coarser grit stone. You'll notice on this corner and on this corner that I haven't gotten all the way through it, but I'm not gonna bother because in order to do that, I gotta take all of this material. And the only part that's important is actually right out here. So I'm just gonna bypass that. And now what I'm gonna do is work through finer grits until I get to my final one, which will be 16,000, and then that'll have a nice polish on it. Okay, that probably represents 15, maybe 20 minutes start to finish. So that surface has been polished up to 16,000 and I never have to touch it again. Now the sharpening process is gonna happen the same way that we do on any sharpening. The only difference is we're not going to address the back. So for the sake of a few seconds, I'll show you how. Set that down on the primary bevel, elevate. Spend about 10 seconds on the coarse stone or until you can detect a slight burr on the back side of the blade. A little harder because you don't have quite as much surface area to feel. Once you get that, slip over to your finished stone. I prefer the 16,000 grit. Do the same thing except elevate just a degree or two higher. About 10 seconds of work on this one.
And after that, three seconds on each corner. Just pushing down a little more with one than the other. Now, if there's a burr, it's too much work to try to go back and use that little jig to go and hone that. So what I'll do is just use the base of my palm just to flip that back and forth until if there's any burr, it's gone. If you don't want to use your palm, you can do the same thing on a piece of wood. And when you're done, that's ready to put in the blade and, and the plane and test. Now, the only thing different here is, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna bring your chip breaker right to the base of that bevel. You don't wanna be hanging out over it because your shavings will get caught up underneath. And then set that in your plane just as you would. Now when you're dealing with this, remember it's gonna be a lot harder to push. I always like to have a little wax in the sole just to reduce that friction. And then slowly bring the blade out. Okay, now you can read your shaving. I did a video on that as well. And you'll just see those little tears disappear as you get closer and closer to the bottom of those imperfections. But like I said, harder push, but you'll be able to do things that you just can't do otherwise. Now, if you don't want to go through the ha hassle of creating your own, we actually offer these for sale on our website. We'll leave a link below that'll fit your plane. Either way, high angle, best approach for really highly figured wood. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.